Hello, welcome to a tutorial about annotation as a tool in language analysis. Before we start talking about annotation itself, let me remind you of the point of language analysis in social media. We start with the assumption that language use represents latent features of a speaker, such as demographics, personality traits, or psychological states. But what words matter? The best way to answer this is to know features of a speaker. Then we can explore the language to see what words are associated with the features that we know. This process is best done through a method called differential language analysis, which is covered elsewhere on this site. But how do you know the speaker features in the first place? How do you know when people are female, extroverted, unhappy, or anything else? There are three good ways to do this, observation, surveys, and annotations. Observation means that you just observe the trait directly, or you observe behaviors that strongly imply it. For instance, if you want to know if a person is a Republican, you can see who they follow on Twitter. If they follow a number of Republican Party leaders, and no leaders of any other political party, that's evidence that this person is a Republican. Surveys mean that you ask people about their traits. This can range from a single question to an extensive questionnaire. Finally, you can use annotation. This is when you ask trained raters to look directly at the language and decide if they perceive the trait or not. They assign a label to each message. For instance, if you want to know what language expresses moral outrage, you simply have people read a sentence and decide whether they think it expresses moral outrage or not. These labels can be categorical or scalar, depending on what you're interested in. The purpose is to have a big list of messages, all of which have a label. The simplest way to do this is by training informed raters such as research assistants or volunteers, in person. This has been standard practice in social science labs for decades, and it has the advantage of allowing lots of oversight. But language analysis requires thousands of messages, so it's usually impractical to do in-house. The best solution is to give your language data to a large group of people, each of whom is paid small amounts of money to annotate messages one after another. There are several online platforms designed to facilitate exactly this sort of thing, such as Amazon Mechanical Turk, Qualtrics, or Crowdflower. These services connect to huge pools of workers who opt in to do short tasks online. Raiders must first undergo training. This involves a brief but comprehensive explanation of exactly what you're looking for. You must be clear and detailed so that all of your raters know what they're doing. After training, you should require that raters answer questions about what they've read to make sure they were paying attention. Only after your raters pass this task should they be allowed to rate messages. Each message task should consist of a relatively small amount of text and one or two simple questions getting at the annotation you want. Your raters should be paid for each message they annotate, and it's usually best to let them repeat the task as many times as they want. In setting up your tasks, you need to answer two questions. How many messages should I have annotated? And how many people should rate each message? The general rule of thumb is that more is always better, but that can get expensive. Often you have to make a choice, more messages being rated, or more raters per message. The advantage of more messages is that you have a wider range of language with labels. The advantage of more raters per message is that you're more certain of the labels that you get. Although the precise answer to this depends on what you're rating, it's usually better to have more messages than more raters per message. That is, noisy labels of a wide range of language 
is more useful than precise ratings of a smaller range of language. In doing annotations, there are some few things you should consider. First, the trait you want to get at needs to actually have the potential to be identifiable in the text you're showing people. If it isn't, then no matter how well your raters are trained, they won't be able to pick up on anything. You can ask people to label messages in a variety of ways. You can ask them to just place messages into categories, or you can ask them how much of a particular trait they perceive. Certain techniques work best for certain features. Next, you must be certain that the trait makes sense to be measured through annotation. To demonstrate what I mean, let's use an example. Let's say you're interested in the language of extroversion, so you have raters label messages based on how extroverted they think the writers are. You have a problem here. What you're interested in measuring is not exactly the same thing as what you're actually measuring. Extroversion and perceived extroversion are not the same thing. How bad a problem this is depends on what you're actually interested in and why. The lesson here is simply to not assume that a perceived feature is necessarily the same as a feature itself. Finally, you need to consider your raters. Even the most motivated raider is not going to want to spend more than a few seconds rating a single message. If your task is very easy, then this isn't a problem. But if it requires some time and energy, you should take some steps to ensure good quality. First, raters are willing to spend time and energy on a task that pays well. Second, to keep raters from moving on too quickly, you can add a minimum time limit. For instance, users aren't allowed to make a rating until five or 10 seconds have passed. Finally, raters are motivated by feeling like what they're doing is important and if they're inherently interested in the task. Keep this in mind when working on your instructions. We hope this tutorial helps you get started on your own annotations. Thank you.